Happy Origami Day, everybody, and welcome to my first video. Um, this is one of my most recent designs. It's a penguin. This was folded from a 15, uh, no, a 5.5 uh, by 5.5 inch square of paper, printer paper. I painted one side blue and left the other side white, but any paper will work. In the video, I'm going to be using this standard origami paper, and this one is 5.9 by 5.9 inch, or 15 by 15 centimeters. So, here I'm going to be using black. And make sure that your paper is dual colored. That way you'll get this nice color change on his tummy. And any paper, any size will work. You can even make like a really small one. So let's get started now. So the first step is to um, fold the paper in half diagonally like this unfold and now I'm going to fold it about like this well, actually, I'm going to fold in half first, but just make some little pinch marks. I'll show you. Line up the corners like this, and then just make a little mark there. It should be about that long. You don't really need to do that step. You could also fold straight through, but then you might get a line a crease going right through there. So I just made those pinch marks. Now what you're going to do is fold it like this. And right here you can see that is going to be the center and the center of the paper is right there. So however long you want, the, however big you want the white part to be, make it like that. So we're going to fold these two corners and however big you want it to be, you fold it. And then just make sure it goes to this corner. Like that. And then you're going to fold up to that pinch mark diagonal, which I think I made a little a little bit too short. So this is just half of it from that crease to the edge. Now I'm going to fold the pinch mark a little bit longer so that it touches that crease. And we're making the wing right here. So this flap is going to be the wing. Now you're going to make sure to make a crease from where those lines intersect to this corner. So fold straight through. We're going to make a rabbit ear here, rabbit ear fold. So basically we're going to be folding this, then pinching the diagonal and then making this fold here. So like this. There we go. Now it doesn't really matter if it goes exactly to the diagonals because 
diagonals are not going to be, those two points, I mean, the corners are not really going to be shown here. So now we have that. What you can do is, well, you could reverse this fold. I guess I should have done that earlier. You're going to have it like this. Reverse this diagonal crease. You can fold that down any way you want. And then you're going to line up this line up this crease with this edge. So you're making the exact same thing. So that is perfectly symmetrical. Like that. Again, I'm going to extend the diagonal. Then I'm going to line it up again on the other side. Hope you understand what's going on here if you kind of a beginner. And then we're going to fold it this way because that's where this one's pointing. And now you can sort of see how it's all coming together. Um, you see the tummy and the two wings. So um, now let's, um, we're gonna see, Well, if there's a diagonal here, which we didn't make, we should take this clamp and make it line up there. But I'm just sort of going to imagine it so that that crease won't be there. And it's going to be this, we're going to fold it to this diagonal here. And try to make it touch the point where this, if this diagonal continues when it hits this diagonal, it'll make a point there and try to fold this point to that point. But if you don't really care, you can just make that full diagonal crease. I'll try about there. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now I'm going to repeat on this side. So here we can just make the two points touch. That way it's completely symmetrical. Now we're going to unfold. We're going to make a sink fold. An open sink. Closed sink would not work good with this. So open it up. Reverse this one valley fold here. Reverse this other valley fold here, making them in the mountain folds. And then make these all in valley folds. And then it'll collapse. But you see there's this corner here that we're going to have to sink back in. And we can't really fold this back and make a pre-crease. All we can do is kind of do it like this. Line it up with this black edge. And do really all three of the creases separately instead of all at once like we did with the other one. If you're not getting this, I'll try to show it again with the other wing. And then sink back. And now you see we have the completed wing. Just like that one. And we're going to do the same thing on this side. Okay, we're going to do this side now. So open this up. I'm gonna make this and this be mountain folds. And this one's already a mountain fold. 
So let's quickly reverse this. Depending on your paper, this could be really easy or even hard. If you're using some kind of foil paper. And make these three folds and push them all together. And this should naturally want to go down because we already made that crease. And now just like this one, just like this one, now what we have to do is get this rid of this triangle. And we can't fold it down because that wouldn't work. It would still have a bit of white there. So what we're going to do open it a bit and then push it down just enough so it aligns you can even make it go a little bit lower if you don't want to see a white line there and then do the same on this side and then connect the point where this hits this crease and where this hits that crease connect it with another mountain fold you can sort of just push down and we'll actually see the triangle start coming and then you can just push it like that and collapse here we go now piece everything out Now, this is going to be the part where the feet are going to be. This is going to be the beak. Now, this is where things start to get no reference points because it's kind of like shaping. What we're going to do is fold this down. I guess you could fold it to that diagonal I was talking about that I didn't make. But it's kind of, you know... Uh, doesn't really matter. Now unfold. I'm going to fold this tip to there. If you want, you can try to align it with that. It'll make it more... The, the weight... No, the thickness of the beak more uh, symmetrical. You know, so that like this side of the beak won't be thicker than this side. Now fold this down. So we had to fold that corner up, otherwise you would see it right there, and that wouldn't be good. Now we're going to fold this edge to the center diagonal. Just making this point again, we're just shrinking this, shrinking down that tip there so that we could um, have it the right size to make the head and the beak. Because it was too big before. Now we're going to make a point, a fold that goes from there to here. Or you could just fold this to that center part. And I think it actually just automatically goes into the right spot, depending on how much you folded down the corner before and last step. So as you can see, they don't perfectly touch the center crease. There. So now we have that. That's going to be the head. This is going to be the feet. Now we're going to make an outside reverse fold right here. So if you don't know what that is, you're going to open the paper, bend this down, and then push this valley fold while keeping that bend there. And it'll be like this. And then make that into a mountain fold. And 
this you see is too far. It should be a little bit higher. So maybe like up here. Actually, what I did was I tried to make it start up there, I think. So more like this. I don't know, whatever you think looks good. And then we're just going to make a pleat fold right there. So that means we're just going to fold this in. And then, see there's a mountain fold there, now we're going to make a valley fold right there. Just a small gap in between them. Like that. And that makes it just so you can see the difference with the beak and it's starting to rip. Oops. Well, maybe you could fold it in a little bit more if that starts to happen. I might fix it. Oh no. Oh no. It's ripping. Let me see. Maybe I can. Well, that already ripped now, but I'll try to do it without ripping it anymore. If that step was tricky, then... Then, uh, maybe I can, can ask me to redo it. Well, that's not look that great looking. Whatever that ripped there. So let's just keep going. Well, that's pretty big. This one didn't rip. I guess this is stronger. This is thinner too. So now let's fold this in. I think I sort of just folded it a little bit. Almost at that corner there. See right there, there's a corner almost there. And then I made sure to align the point with the diagonal. So this was actually the first version. Well, actually the second version. While I was designing this. And then later I thought I would add legs and I tried to turn this flap in right here into some legs. And that's, now it looks like this. But this could actually be done. Now, uh, I think I remember how to do this. I'm not sure if I fold it this way or this way. Just a moment, I'm gonna check and make sure. So I was just making sure that these, I knew what I had to do here at these feet because I sort of forgot. So what I'm gonna do is fold this up a little bit. I'm gonna take a look here because I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, yeah. So fold this up to that crease, maybe a little bit less, but just align it with the diagonal. You can't really see, but there's a diagonal fold there. Fold it almost there. Then crease that and now you're going to unfold. Open up these layers. Fold that part. And then it'll look like this. So again, it was like this. You really want to make sure you Get this part, open this, 
open that, fold this in, then these creases, early creases there, they have to reverse because they're valley folds. It's a little bit hard to see, but I wanted to make a black penguin this time. I think you get it. There should be a crease there. Let me just go off of camera for a moment. Ah, no wonder, even I can't see that crease. Okay. I guess it wasn't strong enough at that point. And then make it look like this. Like that. Now, sorry, that shaking. I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to pull this it's all blurry here. There we go. I'm going to pull this down and push right there on that point, making like a I think it's a squash fold. Like that. So pull it down as far as it'll go. Just like that. Now, I think you can go a little further. You want to make sure that this and this touch, I think. And then you'll get a good um, idea of how big it'll be, how much you have to fold down. And if you do that all correctly, it should look like this. On the side, it'll look like this. Now repeat on this side. And this one's gonna be easier because one of the folds are already made. Open it up like that. This was actually not folded perfectly, so you can adjust it. You see how they're not perfectly aligned. So, but anyway, that doesn't really matter. Fold that up, and then you're gonna fold it so that that little edge in there aligns with this edge here. And then fold these up. Bend it like this a little bit. You can make a reverse fold in there if you want. I'm not gonna because there's not enough space. And now, just a bit of shape. So curve it a little bit. Just round it off. Make sure the feet fold up. You can curl it this way, curl it that way. And I'll sort of give them a good position. Can maybe look at a picture if you want but this is just a simple model so you don't need to care too much about how realistic it looks well i guess it's only simple if you're an advanced folder so here we are that's it um, you see they both look the same, except for this one tear it up there, but that's fine. So, hope you enjoyed folding this. Uh, winter is coming, so it's a perfect model to fold. Nice cold model. Well, this guy's not cold, but he will be cold at winter time. So, um, hope you enjoyed this video. Happy folding and happy origami day. Bye everyone. Let's see, let me try to get in the stand. There we go. Maybe I can fold it in half.